Hi, come on in. Welcome to the workshop. Welcome back to the workshop. So it's been a whole year since the power was turned on in here and things have changed. I realized in the last workshop build, I never really showed you around here, but I thought this might be a chance to give you a proper tour. Now the space gets a lot of use, whether it's a kids invent stuff project, something for my own channel, or just a little project that I wanna work on. There's been some fairly big things built in here. I think the biggest is a seven foot dinosaur, which Sean and I built just before Christmas. But the space is perfect to make anything of a, a reasonable size. The workshop's 3.7 meters by 3.7, and it has double doors that you can open up so you can use the space outside as well. Now, when I built the workshop, it just had the workbenches, and I spent a lot of time thinking about how I wanted to store things, where I wanted tools to be within the space, and I feel like I, it's almost there. So let me show you what I've done. So this side of the workshop is mainly for metalwork. I've got a lot of the tools that I need on my pegboard, a place to store my clamps. This end near my vise, I've got my welder and my plasma cutter. That means that all of the metalwork equipment is all in one place and easy to access. And then as I head across, I've got all of my Makita power tools. This shelf is made of ply and it has custom slots in it for all of the different drills and the jigsaw and grinders. So everything has its place. It even has a slot for my charger, but it means that everything has a place and is neat and tidy. One of the things about this workshop is that because it's used for kids and vent stuff and so Sean is here building as well, we both need to know where things are stored. So organisation is key. When it comes to my screws and bolts, each of them are on separate sides of the drawers and they're each labelled. So this piece of storage is dual use. We have these little baskets which are perfect for storing small components, bits of PPE, grinding discs, and then on the top we've got a load of different inventions and tools. Some of these are kids invent stuff inventions, some of these are inventions you'll know from my channel, and this makes a really nice filming backdrop. You might recognise it if you've watched any of the kids invent stuff videos, we often start and finish our videos here. Now because predominantly the projects built in here are filmed, there are a few things that I've done to make that a little bit easier. So underneath the shelf at the back, there's two strips of LED lights and they're really useful if you're filming whatever you're making on the bench below. I've also got a number of small rig magic arms. One of these is set up to be able to take a phone and the other holds a small LED panel. And that allows me to turn the light depending on which section needs it. The beams are perfect to be able to clip these magic arms to, move them around the workshop and get some really cool overhead shots. Another thing that makes filming easier is that each section of the workshop workshop can be lit up separately. So I have lights for the left hand side, the right hand side, the rear and the front of the workshop, which means that depending on which section I'm filming in, I can have more or less light. So in this corner here, I have the soldering station and some drawers for bits of components to store little bits of metal and PTFE. This is one of the sections that until recently was a little bit messy. I also stored some of the paint and things in this corner and the more dust that you make in the workshop, the more everything just gets covered in it. So I decided to store the paint in one of the clear plastic containers. So this is a modified belt sander. The jig around it is based on Woodwork Junkie's YouTube video where he made a similar jig for his belt sander. 
it does an okay job. It is no substitute, obviously, to a proper belt sander. And a proper sander is definitely one of the tools on the list for the workshop. But in the meantime, it will do. Breathing a new lease of life into this filing cabinet was one of my favorite projects for the workshop. And if you wanna see how I did it, there's a full reel over on my Instagram. I often share a lot of the upgrades in the workshop as they're happening over on social media. But this gray filing cabinet I had had for quite a while, actually in an office, and just bring it into the workshop, give it some love. I love the colors and these drawers are amazing. And they're perfect for storing things like tape and glue and PPE and fabric. So this used to live in my kitchen. This is actually an Ikea kitchen storage thing, uh, which was modified. Lovely Lego handle, and the pillar drill and grinding wheel sits on here perfectly. And it means that I can pull it out into the workshop, I can even take it outside if I need to. And behind it is a set of shelves, which were kind of inspired by something I saw in Pinterest, but it allows me to store all of the drill bits, all of the cutting fluids, everything that I need for the pillar drill. And I love this little corner. I love the set of shelves. I love the artwork, which is from the incredible Estefany. And this whole corner just really makes me happy. So now I've been in the workshop for a year, I made a little list of some of the things that weren't quite working and I had three main things I wanted to tackle. The first thing was the workbenches. Now I love them, but I had always considered putting metal on a section of the workbench. It's really useful for welding, we did that down in Cornwall, but I loved how the wood looked and I wasn't really sure that I wanted to cover that. However, having welded on the workbenches, it causes an absolute mess and when you're welding smaller things together, it's really useful just to be able to put it on a metal surface and not have to attach an earth. So that's one of the upgrades that I've done. I cut a sheet piece of metal out and put it on the top of the workbench. It's super useful and definitely an upgrade that I'm glad I've done. The next two things were all things on this side of the workshop. So I hadn't got anywhere to store long lengths of steel or wood, and also this bookshelf, which wasn't really ever supposed to be in the workshop, ended up just being a disaster. So I bought some clear plastic containers to store things in, sort a few things out, and although it's not gonna be a long-term feature of the workshop, it is definitely better, and the shelving is really useful to store things on. But one of my favorite upgrades for the workshop is this steel racking. So I made these brackets out of some old bits of metal left over from projects, welded them together, painted them, and they look amazing. It's so nice to be able to get those long lengths of steel and wood off from being propped up against the wall and get them out of the way. But the workshop upgrades are never truly finished. There are always things that I want to improve and make better. One of the things for the future is these drawers here. Now currently, they're very cluttered, it's quite tricky to find things, and they do not look like the rest of the organized workshop. So I've teamed up with Shadow Foam, and I'm in the process of making these better. And Shadow Foam want you to be able to do that too, so they are offering all of you a discount if you use my code, which will appear on the screen. And also, if you want to just have a try, they're offering free samples. So I'll leave a little link in the description and explain how you can get hold of some of those. So that's the end of the workshop tour. Leave any questions below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, See you soon. What are we on, BBC? This is the 10 o'clock news. Good night. That's the end of the tour. Now go, get out, bye, like, subscribe. See you next time.